and welcome to Toe for Drives, where I am once again asking myself, why out of all 900,000 Mercedes W126 S-Classes built, I chose to purchase one with holes in it and with a couple other questionable damage points, but I gotta, I gotta lose these, I can't see. But um, <laughs> today we're gonna be trying to improve upon the looks of this car, get it cleaned up, make it roadworthy so I can actually drive it out of the garage and we can go on a little POV test drive together. I don't know that that's gonna happen in this episode, but we're gonna try and make some progress to get to that point very soon. As you can see, I've got my priorities straight and instead of fixing all of the broken glass, I've gone to the scrapyard and gotten a brand new, well, when I say brand new, I mean moss filled W126 replacement grill. Unfortunately, somebody took the star off the top, but I think that mine will fit in here nicely. It's not perfect, but it was 20 bucks and it beat spending $100 for one on eBay. Also at the junkyard, I got a new rear view mirror because mine has a chunk that was blasted out of it, as you can see there. And I bought this trim panel, which was off of an 85 and mine's an 86 and it's actually the wrong piece. So if you're in the market for a 1985 Mercedes W126 quarter trim piece, hit me up because I have no use for this. <laughs> Among the things in the car at the junkyard, I've gotten some videos of this. If you're wondering why I was wearing these when I got out of the car, these were in the car. So how could I not take these? They're fantastic as well as Christmas favorites, Tony Bennett cassette tape in original packaging. I have to try that out. And finally, Paul Simon and Graceland on another cassette tape here. So lots of like weird 80s relics and some other extremely questionable items were in that car at the junkyard, but I was able to score some cool pieces. We're gonna take the shop vac and suck all that broken glass out of the car and I'm gonna wear gloves because apparently safety glass can still slice you up pretty bad. So we're gonna switch over to POV and start getting some work done on this baby here. All right, well, I'm about to start working on a car in POV. I swear I'm not trying to copy the God himself, Chris Fix. I just happened to uh, have a POV setup, so here we go. Finally, I get to do something that I've been wanting to do for so long. I've had this car for like two months now, and I've been wanting to peel this off. There's all this glass that's like caught in here, but I've got the vacuum nearby now, so I can finally do this. The question is, can I grab all of this glass? It might just be kind of stuck to our crash wrap here. Or is it going to, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna or. It's gonna do the, the or option. Oh no! It's taken my paint off the door. <laughs> no! This car's definitely, as a disclaimer, the car's never been repainted. Don't, don't look over here in this section. How much more paint is it going to take off? Oh, it's only a small amount. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take, take the vacuum to this now, is what's gonna happen. All right, I finally got the driver's compartment pretty much cleared out so I can finally like sit in this thing like it's a normal car. And when I was sitting in here, I noticed a sort of ticking noise, okay? The clock is correct. I have not started this thing since I filmed that last video like two weeks ago. The clock is right and it's ticking. This thing is, is really, really destined to live, I think. I just kind of realized after I just vacuumed out the driver's compartment here, 
I should probably go through the contents of this car so I don't accidentally suck anything up in the vacuum that I don't want to suck up in the vacuum. So I've got a trash bag here. We're gonna go through this together. I've never gone through this car. I've got a little bit of a sneak peek of what's in the little driver's door pocket here, which I guess is where we will start. <laughs> I don't know how much of this I really wanna show. That's a discount tire receipt. I'll just show you this, this one. <laughs> All right, <laughs> see what else we can find in here. Ooh, well, surprise, surprise, there's some more glass. Oh, we got a winner. Ooh, a hazard switch. Does not feel like it works. Well, that switch feels like it does nothing. All right, well, we'll set that aside for later. There is a hazard switch in there, so maybe that was the old one and he didn't want to throw it away. Ooh, a coin. Yes. We're making our money back. <laughs> Add that to the pile. 10 cents, baby. I found this in there too when I was vacuuming the driver's compartment. Okay. I am gonna have to do another pass through here <laughs> with the vacuum. What is this? This is our, our trim piece with glass in it. This is the trim piece that goes right here. And I was trying to get a whole new piece to replace that, but got some fuses here. It's not a good sign. There is a brand new OEM fuel cap. So that's pretty cool. We've got lots of little bonus parts in here as a treat. The heated seat controls are dangling off the seat right there. That's also probably not a very good sign. Let's see what we've got over here. A piece of wood where I think a projectile came in and hit the glove box because it's locked shut. I don't think the key opens it. Shall we try together? I don't think I need this piece of wood, do I? Let me throw this away. We've got two keys for the car. There's the one that starts the car, and then there's this other mystery key. Maybe that does the glove box. What do we think? Oh, that was correct. Okay, that does do the glove box. And it doesn't open still. Oh, there we go. What is this? AutoZone spark plug gapper. Interesting. That's the only treat that's in the glove box. Okay. I think I broke it. Oh, okay. Here's our wood trim piece. You can see where said object entered the glove box. How where does this go? Oh, it goes just like that. Check that out. Pretty, pretty cool there. Should drive around with it like that. We'll set that aside. This is cool to see this from behind. Mercedes actually used real wood trim pieces in the 80s. What else is down here? Oh, a lighter. Does it work? It absolutely works, and it's singeing part of my glove off there. I think the back seat is pretty empty. Got nothing on the floor there except, you guessed it, glass. I don't know what this is. That is a massive floor mat with a corroding penny on top. Is that a corroding, what is that? Was that a penny? At one point that was, I think, a penny. I am now going to <laughs> empty the contents of the trunk or boot if you're watching from the UK. All right, it smells so bad in here. There was water in here that sat, and now it's just really, really bad. Should we, should we set some of these fluids aside? Maybe some of the other project cars in here, or this car will need some power steering fluid. Feels like there's some in there still. Automatic transmission fluid, okay. I'm just gonna put these all in the cabinet with the other fluids over there. I don't know what that is. Coolant maybe? Unfortunately, we're gonna have to say goodbye to our clear fruit bottle that was used as a funnel. I'm sure it funneled lots of valuable liquids into this car. A bunch of like party candles or something. I wonder if they work. Shall we try one? Oh, they do work. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, there's so much water in here. 
so much water. I will say though, the cool thing about this car is it does still have the spare wheel and it looks like all of its sort of jack and accessories. So that's pretty cool. We've got it on a super old school Continental tire that looks like it's right from the 80s. So I wonder if that spare has ever even been out of there. All right, I'll close this before I get, what's the word? Asbestos, I probably already have inhaled enough of that. Another interesting discovery has been made upon removing the crash wrap from the passenger side of the car. Check that out. Nice little skim right there. Looks like it's an exit, so it came in, probably actually came in right there on that quarter window and then exited right here, right on the B pillar. I'm starting to think maybe I'm gonna buy four doors, just four complete doors for the car and then maybe do a color change. All right, everyone, it's been about a month since that last clip was filmed. I've been traveling around the country for my other jobs with the Topher and Winding Road and Daily Motor, and I just now am having some time to work on the old girl again. My buddy Dane is coming to join me today. We are going to try and sort the front suspension out. I got some parts for this thing finally to fix the weird uh, angle of the front wheels. So hopefully with these parts installed, we'll actually be able to drive this thing. I also wanna take care of these uh, remaining windows over here. I wanna razor blade those out uh, today while we do the suspension. So that's the plan for today. Looking forward to sharing it all with you. Hello, this is voiceover Tover. I thought maybe my voice would sound better with some smooth jazz behind it. Anyways, getting the car jacked up. Wizard of Oz reference in three, two. All right, so obviously when it comes to things like this, I'm pretty much useless. So I've got the Wicked Witch of the East here under the car. <laughs> Your legs look hilarious. So what are, you, what are you actually doing right now? So because this is an auction car, um, auction cars don't get treated very nicely. Um, this thing was carried by a giant forklift around the lot until our dear friend Christopher purchased it. So um, because of that, the forklift picked the car up from underneath and bent the front outer tie rods Yes. Um, so, this... so badly that the, the car doesn't steer anymore. The wheels are pointed in two different directions. Yes, so. so this looks like a banana and it's supposed to look like this. So. With any luck, we'll be able to just pop these ball joints out. There's one on each side of the tie rod end, so four totally. And we'll hopefully be able to give it a rough alignment and take it for a little drive around the block and see if it actually steers again. It's also um, leaking trans fluid on your sockets, just so you know. That's okay, yeah. it's fine. Not only had the bullet wounded bends leaked on Dane's sockets, it also leaked all over the floor and some more. Um, and oh, you can see there's a tire track there where I drove through it and then also put my foot in it for some reason, tracked it all the way up to the front. Oh yeah, right here is the uh, suspension component that came off, looks like a rusty banana. One above it is what it's supposed to look like. Oh yes, uh, oh, here goes Dane. Good job. Yeah, in reference to Lightning McQueen, except those are facing in two opposite directions. Oh yeah, this is some glass that I then vacuumed out and actually got the interior looking pretty dang minty after this. Oh. Yeah, that's definitely part of it. Should hang it from the rearview mirror. Oh yeah, wait, there's not a rearview oh. mirror. All right guys, it's all put together. It's back on the ground. We've got the new suspension arms on and check out this alignment. We just had to eyeball it today, but everything looks pretty straight on. So we're gonna go ahead and take this thing out on the road for the first time and see how it drives. I'm not holding my breath for it to be perfect, but uh, hopefully it'll be all right. It'll you be you seem to, to not be worried at all. I'm so confident. <laughs> A little Mercedes on my keychain now. All right, here we go. You ready for the buzzer? I'm so ready. All 
Oh yeah. Oh, God, the, sh the shifter is like, <laughs> so easy to put it into gear. All right, seems to be going pretty straight. Let's go ahead and flick our lights on here. Back into park for a second. What do you guys think? Is it gonna drive like nothing's wrong? Judging by the way it's idling, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> God. Hey, I vacuumed over there and cleaned it up. It just, that doesn't shut. It smells like like a 1970s casino. That's kind of what it is. It is. Yeah. You yeah, wanna yeah. you wanna roll your window up? Uh, I wish I could. <laughs> I have a lovely unobstructed view. Ooh! Nice throttle response there. Yeah. Good shift into second. Ooh! The steering is very vague. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Good job. Thank you. On your, uh, your, your alignment. My eyeball alignment. Feels like it doesn't really want to kick down. Maybe that's because it's low on trans fluid. Could be. Yeah, we never checked that. Yeah, we should probably check that. Or the oil. <laughs> oh yeah, we need to check that too. We just hopped into one. I was too anxious to get this thing. I understand. Oh. Oh, good. Good. It's unhappy. It's. Oh, I don't want to have to push oh, this thing back. No. Come on. <laughs> It's trying. It's trying. I want to make it back to the garage so we have to push the stupid thing. Yeah, oh, come on, baby. What do you think is causing that? Uh, oh, it just backfired. Was that a back? Yeah. Come on, baby. Ooh, yeah, that's. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, now it mustn't hit the $200,000 Maybach while we're backing in. <laughs> Don't touch the Maybach, that's the goal. Ooh, it wants to, it's about oh, to die. No. It's about to die. Oh no, here, put it in neutral. Oh, it died, sad. Is that why you told me to put it in neutral? <laughs> yeah, because you just turned it back <laughs> up and drive, yeah. <laughs> yup, yup, yup. Is that in a good spot? I think that's pretty good. Okay. You're not any farther out than the Navi is. What was that? <laughs> it's probably another mouse. Oh god, probably. Alright everyone, well there you have it. The first drive of my W126. I would call that like 60% success. Not confidence inspiring, but also not concerning. But we're also aware that the fuel pump is like leaking. Oh, thank you for that. So. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a nice puddle of uh of fuel on the ground from this thing. So, I guess that'll just be next on the list and it moves under its own power. It does. It moves under its own power. It it, it goes through some gears. I mean, it seems like we got it up to like 40. Yeah, we did. There was no vibrations or anything. It it seemed to to be fine. So, a little more you... TLC, I think she'll be pretty happy. All right. Well, there you have it. The first drive of my W126 S class. For some reason, I didn't film an outro on the day that I drove it, but uh, here I am now today filming an outro. But anyways, I appreciate each and every one of you for joining me in this journey of this silly car, um, and I'll see you very soon in the next video.